Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois Season 2. Today we're going to be doing my review for the season finale which just aired, making the video right after it just finished. So I am totally in the mood to talk about Superman Lois right now because what a finale. That was crazy, and we have lots of stuff to talk about, so don't go anywhere throughout this entire video. You're going to want to watch the entire thing. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe and turn on notifications if you are new, so you don't miss any future DCTV videos later this year. Okay guys, just a reminder, the Flash Season 8 finale is tomorrow night, so my review of that is going to be up after the episode airs, just like this episode, so pretty much in 24 hours from now, my Flash review will be out, so be on the lookout. And please be sure to turn on notifications to not miss that. And also follow me on Twitter at the DCTV show to be notified if YouTube for some reason doesn't notify you. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into today's review. We're going to be starting chronologically at the start with Chrissy, who sends out a message to all of the world, basically confirming that the merging is real and it's happening right now, and things are going to get weird. And so that's just how we begin, some things are blipped but some things didn't change and that's just the way that it is and the family pretty much noticed that straight away as they analyse what's in their home, what's not in their home and the fact that people are starting to disappear. And so Jonathan and Jordan, they talk to Natalie and Natalie explains her motivations, basically teasing that she's going to go after her dad because obviously the last time we saw her dad, that was him going after Ali, and he's pretty much stuck in the other dimension. And so, at this point, we see Tao Ro, who returns out of nowhere. As you guys may recall, he disappeared a couple of episodes ago. We were wondering, where has he been all this time? Well, he is back, and he is back to help, and he goes to fight Ali. And so, it seems they are proper brothers now, which is very nice. They share a great hug in this episode. Before he flies up and tries to stop Ali, but Ali is all-powerful. And Tao has absolutely nothing on her, just as his normal self. He doesn't have any power boost or anything. And so, Jordan goes up to help him and throws Ali away, momentarily stopping her and halting the merging of the two Earths. And so obviously this is something that Tao is extremely grateful for and he acknowledges that straight away. And so at this point actually Lois is separated from the family and she's on the Bizarro world and we see Bizarro Lois show up. However there is just one weird thing about Bizarro Lois showing up. She literally doesn't say anything the entire episode, she kind of just lurks there. It's a little bit out of character I feel like Lois, especially not having seen her family in a while, obviously she has some of her family left on Bizarro World. It just doesn't make sense that she wouldn't talk. I guess they talked off screen, that's probably what they want you to think. But it was just weird that they didn't do any kind of small interactions on screen. And so at this point, Clark reassures the family that he is going to somehow stop Ali despite him having no powers. And so at this point you're like, okay, what is Clark planning? Does he have anything in mind? And sure enough, he does have something in mind and we'll get to that in just a second but we have two more things that happen before he goes off and tries to regain his powers and that is Natalie going to save her dad by going through the portal in the mines. She goes head first, she doesn't care, she brings a portal and she believes from a partial message that she receives from her dad that he is in need of rescuing and he needs the pod but it turns out that he actually asked to bring the pod but bring it full of ex-kryptonite but that part of the message wasn't properly conveyed and so they have to improvise. Also at the same time Lois runs into Carl on Bizarro World and Carl blames himself and thinks he's deserved all of this and to be dead and alone on this different earth away from his family but Lois reassures him no one deserves this not even you Carl and so Superman, let's talk about this, he actually goes into the sun and obviously with the help of Tao, like he could not fly up there at that point, he believes by going into the sun he's going to somehow be able to get his powers back and as we all know as Superman fans and Supergirl fans, they get their powers and I'm talking about they as in Kryptonians from the Earth's yellow sun, that's why on Krypton they'd never had any powers because they had a red sun but when the Kryptonians come to Earth, 
they get powers because of the way that their cells interact with the yellow sun radiation and so getting an ultra dose of yellow sun radiation by literally going into the sun is the perfect way for Superman to regain his powers and actually become supercharged as we see in this episode. He literally gets juiced up full of yellow sun radiation, his emblem glows yellow, his entire body is kind of coursing in this bright energy, this golden light, basically signifying the supercharged nature of his body right now and he is all powerful, he is ready to go stop Ali after this huge dose of yellow sun radiation literally by going into the sun. That was a proper Superman moment. It was a big comeback for him. And so Jordan and Jonathan are greeted by their granddad and he actually explains some of the stuff that he has experienced in the past as someone working with the DOD and having experience. And he does all of this to basically calm them down because they are freaking out about what to do. And he mentions he's seen glimpses of other worlds and he says he's seen leagues of superheroes on other Earths, and so this leads us to believe, oh wait, Superman is not on the same world as The Flash. This is not the Superman that we've seen in past crossovers, and this is not the same Lois, because this Superman is in fact the only superhero on this planet, obviously with the friends around him, they are all heroes in their own rights, However, this is the only Superman on this planet, and it seems they have officially confirmed that Superman Lois is not set on Earth Prime, but it's confirming that they are in the Arrowverse, it is canon, but they are on another Earth, and that is potentially why some of the odd things that have been going on, like Lucy returning in a different form, and the kids growing up and seeing all of these different characters, like Morgan Edge, be different people, it kind of makes sense and I believe this is their way of letting them have freedom but also acknowledging that they are finally actually in the Arrowverse and that is something that fans have been waiting for for a long time and so I know fans are going to be extremely split about this and they're going to be annoyed. I will say I'm a little bit annoyed that we are kind of retconning the past however it gives me hope that with them acknowledging the other heroes out there, there is still a chance for crossover and I'm not ruling out crossovers at all just because he is the only hero on this planet and that just gives him a good reason for their stories to be Superman centric and you know Superman can't just go call the Flash for some help or call Supergirl. In fact on this earth it's all down to Superman and without Superman and say John Henry Irons and Jordan the earth is in big trouble. But with the acknowledgement of other heroes out there in different earths we're definitely going to get crossovers so me personally I'm okay with this. I think it's a reasonable explanation for what has been going on and why it's been so different, why they haven't acknowledged them properly. It makes sense that potentially we're on another Earth, we're not on Earth Prime, maybe this is say the new Earth 3 or Earth 4 or Earth 5 or something. And I look forward to them actually explaining this whenever Superman crosses over with other heroes in the Arrowverse. I also would like to point out one more thing in terms of the Arrowverse, I was just remembering the John Diggle scene from season one of Superman Lois when he showed up and he talked about like Oliver, he referenced Oliver and then he said they all would have in regards to what Oliver would have said and what the other Arrowverse heroes would have said. So it's interesting that that was an actual reference basically confirming that this John Diggle that we know and that we're seeing in Superman Lois is the same John Diggle that we're seeing on the other shows. And we'll talk more about Diggle later, but that is a big discrepancy because it seemed to be that in that early cameo in season one, they were acknowledging that yes, these other heroes exist, but if they don't exist like this finale says, and Superman is the only hero on this earth, how does that make sense? I think that is literally a plot hole and that's something that they've overlooked. Obviously that's just a piece of dialogue that people have been bringing up online since this episode literally just finished. But you know there are going to be discrepancies and it's just interesting that they've chosen to distance themselves from the Arrowverse. This is a big deal, people are going to be very angry, but also I feel like it's a good thing that they finally acknowledged it. 
Okay, let's talk about the next bit in the episode. And so this is when Superman has been supercharged. He's returned to Earth and he's flying over the sky. It was a proper Superman moment. You got to see everyone's reactions. They were all like, it's Superman, it's Superman. I kind of got a little bit of chills because he's back. He's got his powers. He's going to stop Ali. And so Ali is so overpowered as Superman confronts her. And she tries to absorb his powers like a parasite, like the parasite she is. And she is overpowered and cracks into two. She splits into the two people. Superman is that powerful from the sun that he literally overloads Ali. I thought that was such a great moment. Really, really sold it by the look in Tyler's face and just how powerful he looked. And I think the CGI in the scene, especially on Superman, was pretty awesome. And so Superman smacks Bizarro World so hard as he goes round and round and round. For a second I thought he was going to time travel because that is the signature Superman move where he flies around the earth so many times at such a fast pace that he time travels. But no, he just does it to build momentum and he smacks Bizarro World so hard that he separates the two Earths from each other. I don't know how that exactly works and how they were completely separated, but you can presume that where he was, where he was with Ali, he was able to separate them and knock them back into their right places in separate universes. I thought this was a great moment, even though it's a little bit obscure as to how it exactly happened. It was such a cool landing. As he hit the ground, it was a proper money shot. Probably my favorite shot of Superman Lois so far. It was very, very cool. Okay, so back on our Earth, whatever Earth that may be, definitely not Earth Prime, we have Miracle Monday as they celebrate truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. I believe that is a new Superman slogan that was released recently in the comics because normally it's truth, justice, and the American way but now it's for a better tomorrow, and I really like that tagline. And so they celebrate Superman, they celebrate them not being destroyed and having survived the day. And so Lana and Clark at this point make up, they have a little hug, and Lana is obviously very happy that Superman has been able to save her family and save everyone, basically let them live on their lives by him being a superhero and the superhero that they most definitely needed. And so, at this point, Lois goes over to her job, and she's at the Smallville Gazette, and she reveals that Clark is Superman to Chrissy, because she's tired of hiding the truth from her partner. Chrissy's completely shocked, she's very stunned, she's overwhelmed, and she becomes a little bit obsessive, like later in the episode, when Clark and Lois are dancing, she kind of just spies on him, from the distance because she's absolutely fascinated how this person, Clark Kent, is Superman. And so the celebrations are great as everyone dresses up as Superman. There was even one John Henry Irons get up. Thought that was really cool. Loved the music in the scene. And at the same time, Jordan and Sarah actually make up. They're going to give it another go. They talk about the time that he survived those collapsing poles and basically Jordan is now able to tell her everything now that Sarah knows the truth about his dad and him having powers. I think it's just such a nice way to end the season that we finally get closure on all of that and especially with Sarah having now known absolutely everything that she needs to know and she's been told everything that she hasn't been told and that just puts us in a really good spot to start next season. And so John Henry Irons and Natalie live on and they are at the fair. It's very nice to see them back together again because they had a very heartwarming moment towards the end of the episode when they thought they were going to die at the hands of Ali, but Superman saved them. And so Clark and Lois at this point, they have a little dance like I mentioned. It's very sweet. Chrissy stares at them and Clark wishes that everyone was as happy as he is right now, which was another Clark moment, which I loved. But after the break, we returned and Lois visits the two alleys in their prison cell. I thought it was a bit weird that they didn't separate them into different cells because they are dangerous together and they do kind of acknowledge that the parasite within them kind of took over, but I still wouldn't trust them together even if they didn't have the power. But back at the Kent Smallville farm, Jordan and Jonathan are given huge trucks by Tauro. Clark is shocked. He's like, what is going on? This is so bad. And he sent two huge trucks for his teenage kids. 
absolutely insane because they are huge. They are much bigger than them. And no one would even imagine like having a truck like that. Oh my god, that was just amazingly big. And at this point, we get the reveal that Tal Ro has actually left our Earth and he's gone to Bizarro World to meet his wife. And that's where we pick up with him, presumably next season, having reunited with his wife. Well, technically reunited, although this is another version of his wife. So let's talk about the big scene and this scene was actually much shorter than i thought it would be and that is the return of john diggle to superman lois and he shows up in this diner he talks to john henry irons for just a couple of minutes like it's a very short scene i thought they would have talked about a lot more but he just basically reveals that he has been looking into bruno Mannheim who is the head of Intergang. Bruno is mixed up with absolutely everything that you don't want to be mixed up with, and Diggle is trying to figure out why Bruno killed the John Henry Irons of this world, and that is going to be a story that will continue on in Season 3, and I'm pretty sure Bruno Mannheim is going to be a villain for at least half the season, if not the whole season. We've had references to him in the past as Lois has looked into him, as a journalistic subject due to his extremely shady activities but what's interesting about the scene here is Diggle says on this planet which is a weird way of wording now I think this wording suggests that this John Diggle is in fact not a doppelganger but our Diggle from Arrow and from the Flash now I have no idea if Argus or Diggle have the capability to cross across the multiverse as of right now So that kind of puts up a big red flag about is this actually our Diggle or not? But you would have to presume it is considering he's is on this planet But as far as we know in the Arrowverse right now No one knows that the multiverse still exists past crisis on infinite earths because everyone believes that all the earths were merged to earth prime but in fact we know that there are other Earths out there that were formed and potentially Superman Lois's Earth is one of those Earths that were formed after Christ on the Infinite Earths and I believe that is one of their big explanations as to why this is not set on Earth Prime. And so the big question is, did Diggle travel across the multiverse in order to do this? Or is this just like a blip in continuity? But you would have to presume the people behind Superman Lois would definitely consider the fact that they are bringing in Diggle means that they are bringing in a character who is potentially from Earth Prime, but in the same episode they acknowledge that this is not Earth Prime, this is another Earth, and that Earth Prime does exist out there, the multiverse exists, but Superman is the only hero on this Earth. And so what is the explanation as to why John Diggle is here? Well, I think the best thing is maybe he's figured out how to travel across the multiverse and seemingly he's interested in Bruno Mannheim and Intergang. Maybe this somehow links into a bigger story that is going to be happening. And why is he interested in specifically John Henry Irons of this earth and how he died? So I look forward to finding out more about that in season three. And yeah, it was a little bit of a shame that the Diggle scene was shorter than expected, but nevertheless it teased what was coming and kind of gave us a little bit of clarification about is this Diggle, our Diggle, is this another planet, and things like that. And so after this, as we reach the end of the episode, Lucy briefly returns, it's revealed that she's moving to Metropolis. We're probably not going to see Lucy next season, that is just my hunch because she's moving away. Mainly it's always Smallville related in Superman and Lois. But the final thing that happens in the season finale is that the Kent family go off on a holiday on a boat trip. Superman aka Clark reveals that he's going to make a new fortress in the middle of the ocean wherever they are. He reveals that it's not just going to be for him, it's going to be for the family. So this is a very interesting development and it's a cool place to place the new fortress. I'm looking forward to seeing this new fortress next season. So that about does it for this review slash breakdown of Superman Lois's season two finale. If you did enjoy the episode and if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys tomorrow for my flash review and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.
Icy Room.